The return to Orchid then, Bartley. It's just another dull weekend with you, my friend. It's, well, luckily it's not the weekend then, eh? Midweek. What, you're going to liven up a bit, are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's nice to actually see this place with leaves on the trees. Oh, I don't yeah. think we've ever done before. Have Every we? time we've been here, it's been, well, I mean, like walking around and like, looking at the far bank, thinking, what well, did I used I to aim at? And now you can't see anything, it's all the trees there, all the leaves. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, this is the return to Orchid for myself and Bart. Like I said, we fished here before, we've done well in the winter here. I've never actually fished it this time of year. And it looks good out there, doesn't it? Yeah, it's nice. No, I've never fished it this late into the year and it does look good, doesn't it? We've seen a lot of carp, haven't we? Yeah. Mo most of the fish that we have seen have been out in front of middles and new middles, so that's where we've chosen just like to carp. Just plumb centre of the lake, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, basically, yeah, they're all in the centre, although we're wondering whether that's because of the pressure that's been on the lakes. Bank holiday Monday today, so it's been a busy weekend. Mm. Are they all residing out here? Will they move? Yeah, it's one of them, so... You know, we've got to go where the carp are, obviously. Now, we got here this morning, obviously did the walk around like you normally do. And how have we chosen the switch? So we've decided to play Marsh's old game. Yeah, so Marsh had this uh, game and it was from out the pub. And basically it's like, um, I don't know what it's called, but no. it's like a ring on a little on a little string and you got to like hook it on. And uh, he had a bet with the landlord that if he got three in a row, that he'd get free drinks for the night. And it's outside the cabin. So that's how we decided first choice was, well, I battered you basically, didn't I? Yeah, you did, yeah. So Third go or something like that. Third, fourth go. Straight, straight in there, no messing about. Nice. Bosh. So you're gonna go in middles, I take it, which means you've got to wait for the swim. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a lad, Jack, he's fishing. So I'm going to wait for him to pack up in a few hours. Uh, Mozza, he's straight into a nice empty swim. Yeah, fish bash bosh. Yeah, exactly that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, it's, really, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's nice. I remember like every time we fished it, you can't even feel your fingertips. So it's nice just yeah. to be walking around in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No like four jackets on. Yeah, exactly yeah. that. So we've made the long barrow round. Ended up obviously round this side, which is opposite to where the actual car park is. So we've barrowed around. I'm going to get my kit up. It's raining. It's going to be raining for the majority of this trip. We've got That's two nights ahead of us. Absolutely tank it down tomorrow. Yeah, so it's going to rain for the next 48 hours. But hopefully we can make it happen in that time. Yeah, I mean, I'm selling up if we don't catch one. <laughs> so. You'll get on the market then, son. <laughs> Giving right. it the Barry Blank. I need to get my kit up and uh, get sorted. It'd be a nice empty swim whilst you hang about like a punisher yeah. in your man swimming. Going, when are you going? Well, when are you off, mate? When are you off, mate? Well, when are you off, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, that's a nice start. Been here for about, well, all of 10 minutes. Now, obviously I said I had to wait for Jack to pack up at that swim that I'm moving into. So I thought I'll go for a stroll round. And we did see some fish in this bay when we were walking around this morning. So whilst Mozzle was getting set up, I had a wander down here, threw a few pellets in the margins. I walked back to see Moz, come back, and they were absolutely tearing it up. And this lovely 27 pound common, just literally free lined a little hook bait for it. Straight over where I threw the pellets in. Seen the line go. Mega fight. Got one, off the mark. Happy days. I'll, uh, I'll definitely be coming back down here tomorrow morning. I've thrown some extra bait in on the spot now. So I'll be coming back down tomorrow morning to have a look, see if they're sheeting up on it. Maybe have another go. Well, hey. Right, rods are all sorted then, as you can see behind me. Now, what you will notice, what we didn't do before, was we're using bait boats. Myself and Bart have decided to use boats just because it makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? You know, we've obviously, in the past, we've always cast on here, spotted on here, but this time round, we thought, you know what, we'll have a little bit of difference and we'll bring the boats just to make life that little bit easier. Now, what I've gone in with on mine, I've got two Ronnies on, which are actually fished with PB dumbbell wafters. I've tipped them off with a few maggots as well on top of those. And then on my middle rod, I've got a solid bag out there. That consists of a little mix of Crayfish mini mix. I've also got a few casters in there as well and a few dead red maggots. And then what I've done is given them a good dusting off of the insect meal and obviously put that all into a solid bag. Now what I've dropped in the boat is I'm using the maxi mix, so the old crayfish maxi mix with a few SLKs in there as well. Big fish bait the old SLK and uh, there's plenty of big ones that swim around in here. So fingers crossed that's what does the do for myself. So all three rods are sorted. I did have a bream straight away though on the left hander earlier on, which is a bit, ugh. I didn't even know there was bream in here in all fairness. So, you know, they do love an SLK, the old brems, but you know, it's one of them. So I've just stuck to my guns at the moment. Hopefully I don't get slaughtered by them. But yeah, at the moment, the rods are all out and sorted. We've been lucky with the rain. It was meant to rain all day today, and it hasn't. It's been a little bit on and off sort of thing. So we got lucky there. But we'll go and check out Bart, see what Bart's doing as well. And fingers crossed, it won't be long until one of them three rods behind me sings away. I've got three rods on the dance floor and a little bit different to what I'm used to doing, really. Uh, this time I've opted to use a boat and I've hardly ever used a boat in my life, normally abroad. I don't actually think I've used a bait boat in this country. So I brought one along. I thought, Do you know what, I'll give it a whirl. And uh, yeah, to be honest, it went out pretty smooth. The last encounter with a bait boat I had, I had absolute dramas, let me tell you. A bait boat, I remember my batteries died 10 yards from where I wanted it or I ran out of line or something. I was abroad. I was with Mozart actually, funnily enough. We were down at a place called Riviere. And uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a wild experience. But I've got all three rods out and I've opted for just a little, just a nice little mix. I've got some bug boilies that have been soaking that in just eight and 12 mil. A bit of the mini uh, maxi crayfish mix that I've soaked in a bit of bug food liquid just to soften them up a little bit. So it just pulls that liquid into the pellet. And hook bait wise, I've chose to go, well, three different hook baits. I've got a match the hatch. So I've got a little bug wafter, a tiny little barrel one. I've got a little 10 mil PB pop-up that I've just sank with the weight of the hook. And I've also got a pink 
pop up. Um, I don't often use pink, but I just got a funny feeling that I might catch on that. And yeah, they're all out there, all sweet, plumbed up nice, the peg plumbed up lovely. There's, there's a few different features out here. There's a few gravel bars. There's quite a bit of weed about actually, but there's a nice silk gully. So I've propped, uh, propped my baited area in, in amongst that gully. Feels really nice and smooth. And I have seen just off the side of it, probably, I don't know, nearly 20 yards off the side of it. I've seen 10 shows in the last sort of hour and a half, which is quite promising. So, and to be fair, if I think if I was casting and spawning, not sure if these fish would have stayed there and tolerated that. So just having that boat and just sliding those rigs out, definitely, uh, definitely could be the one. I think, you know, maybe, maybe get a bite fairly soon. I feel confident anyway, absolutely buzzing. Yeah, I'm absolutely starving as well. So I'm gonna get a bit of food on in a minute, but I have also had a wander back down in the, uh, in the bay and that bay where I caught that fish from earlier is crystal clear and the bait's still on the bottom, I can see it. So there's nothing down there. So just, you know, I think the fish have moved out of that bay now. So I think we're in the, in the right position. I think we're doing the right thing. Hopefully the carp will prove us right. Here we go, here we go. Left hand has busted off. Definitely not a bream this time round. And yeah, he smashed the surface. Soon as I leant into him, he peeled off on the bite. And uh, we're playing our first orchid carp of 2023. Let's hope it's the first of many, fingers crossed. It was a bit dubious as to whether I had scared the fish left with all that leading up that I did earlier on to find me spark because Bart was seeing them sort of to the, his left hand side and then left and left again so you know I was a bit worried about that but it would appear that they've come back this way so yeah buzzing absolutely buzzing it is freezing man like you can see our own breath it's that cold <laughs> Ridiculous. It's first week of May, man. And it is Baltic. So, anyway, let's concentrate and try and get this one in. Let's hope he's a giant as well. The old orchid giant, that'd be nice. Come on. Oh, pinged off the peck then. Horrible. Horrible. Come on, you. Come on, let's have you in the net. First one, get in there, yes. Oh, well, here we go, here we go. So, first one of the trip on the first day. I haven't been out too long, couple of hours. And there we go, 24, no, 23 pounds of Orchid mirror, lovely jubbly, that will definitely do. And a nice start and well worth, obviously, all that lead in about earlier on to make sure that the spot is where these bad boys want to feed. So yeah, absolutely wicked. He's a lovely one. Right, we forgot to take snaps of Bart's fish, so we better do it with this one. <laughs> totally forgot, got lost in the moment. <laughs> He's wicked. Right, a big old tail on him. Love these orchid fish. They are awesome. Right. Yeah, they're lovely carps. Go on, son. Lovely bloody jubbly. <laughs> Thank you. 
First bite then from this morning's little flurry. It's this lovely sca angry one. <laughs> Go on, Barry. Mate, chill. Right, the first bite from this morning's flurry is this lovely 26 pounder. Um, all seems to be on the left hand rod. Obviously, yesterday. I had that other 20 on the left hander, then this one this morning, and then not long after putting the rod back out, I had a 23 pounder as well, one that looks very similar to this one. And uh, yeah, nice to be getting a few bites. Bit quiet in Bart Swim for some reason or other, but I know he'll end up getting them definitely. So yeah, all the while the bites are coming from these, be very, very nice indeed. All on them PBs as well. So that seems to be the hook bait of choice this spring for me at the moment. Them dumbbells have done me really, really well this spring. So yeah, absolutely wicked. Let's hope the next bite is from a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. me up. Oh, I was sat here just wondering what I was doing wrong. But just nothing really. Mozza uh, had a couple of nice 20 pounders this morning. And this one's gone. I think this one's on the old pink cook bait. I think this one's on. Here he comes. Oh, he's just popped out the weed, which is nice. And he's on the move. Right off the left hand side of where I'm fishing, there's like a big bank of weed. The spot's absolutely gorgeous compared to the rest of the peg. But yeah, he's uh, where I let him take a bit of line. He just kited around, kited around the back of that weed. He's literally right on those lines. It's got that right hand at it. Just see it starting to move now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, you just swim back under him, mate, yeah. <laughs> That don't feel very nice. Oh, he didn't feel very big. One of your crowd, this. It's just like headbutt in the bottom. Man. Yeah, boy.
What a lovely carp this one is. Exactly the same weight as the common that I had yesterday. 27 and a half pounds. Yeah, but a lovely carp. Caught some really good looking fish this trip so far with Moz's, Moz's mirrors and this one. Yeah, wicked. Nice to uh, get one off of that bait as well. I was sat there thinking, hmm, is it going to happen? Lo and behold. But the funny thing is, is that Moz has caught his on his left hand rod and I've caught mine on my right hand rod. So whether they're just sort of like penned between us, not too sure, but something's going on. I think they're just sat in between us and just obviously drifting about and having a little feed now and again. But yeah, a lovely orchid mirror carp. Beauty. Thank you, buddy. We're going into the last night of this 48 hour session. I've just got all three rods in. I'm gonna refresh everything and send it back out there onto the spot. Now, you would have noticed that I was obviously using a solid bag when I started the trip and that hasn't done me a bite with those casters in, maggots and obviously the crayfish mini mix as well. Just not had a bite on that rod. The rod that's been doing it is obviously this here, which is the Ronnie rig fished a little bit different from the norm. Normally you would associate the Ronnie rig as a pop-up rig, but I'm actually using it as a wafter rig. So it's actually all lying on the bottom with just that PB dumbbell wafter hovering over the top. Now the only difference that I do with the rig is I actually bring the bead right far down on the shank. So it's almost just past the point of the hook. Whereas normally with a pop-up, you would use the bead at the very top so it sits up nice and proud. Now the reasons for that is, not only does it make the hook point a lot more heavier, the mechanics are a lot better for this. And I've found that I've got a lot less hook pulls by bringing that bead right far round on the shank. And the actual setup of the rig, that's a size six wide gape long shank hook. We're on to one of our Ronnie swivels there, and then that's just a fluorocarbon 25 pound hook link. Blobbed off still with a fairly heavy bit of putty right by the hook section there, because I like that to obviously be hanging down low in the water when the fish sucks it up into his mouth. And then blob a putty into the center, that just keeps the rest of the rig pinned down, and it's fished on a leg clip. Lead obviously comes off nice and easy, as you would have seen there. That's a four ounce lead on there, like a nice heavy lead, just to send that hook point home. And I'm fishing that straight through. There's obviously a leader band on orchid, so I'm not using a leader whatsoever, just fishing my mono straight the way through with that. And that is what I'm now gonna put on all three rods tonight. So I've binned off that solid bag. I only had a pint of caster with me anyway, just to obviously put into the solid bags, but, you know, it's just, it hasn't done me a bite, so it's pointless putting it back out there. This is what's been doing me the bites. Now, what I'm fishing over this is 12 mil SLKs. Now, really you would associate using 15 millers this time of year, maybe 18 millers, but it's still quite cold and the water temperature is still fairly low. So I'm only using 12 millers at the moment and I'm crushing a few up in the boat as well. I'm probably giving them about 30, 40 baits in the boat and then same again, halved and crushed. And then over the top of that, I'm putting the maxi mix pellets on top. So I would say about two handfuls of maxi mix pellets. The old crayfish ones smell absolutely divine. They do if, um, well, they do to me, but for most people, they're a horrible pungent smell, but I really like them. They're a very unique pellet, the maxi mix pellets is, or the crayfish ranges. And then over the top of that, I'm just putting a dash in of red maggots because that's what I've got sat on top of that hook bait there. I like that little bit of movement that you get on you know, the bottom of the lake bed. So that's why I'm just putting literally a handful of red maggots over the top of them. And that is what's been doing me the bite. So I'm gonna send all three rods back out there onto the spot in the hope to get a few more bites tonight.
Well, after catching that lovely common yesterday, I had to come down and have another go. I put some more bait on there yesterday, come down this afternoon, just before I was gonna redo the rods for tonight. I thought I'd just go and have a look. I'm so glad I did. Just pays to have something back up. Yeah, there was a much bigger mirror there as well. It looks about 36 pounds. So I think I'm gonna get a little bit more bait on this spot and then go and get the rods out for the night and have some tea with Mozza, but well worth coming down here. Yeah, so made up with that. What a brilliant capture. Literally took 10 minutes. Amazing. Bye bye mate. Thank you very much. Rod's sorted. Raining. Raining is coming. Yeah, happening. A little thunderstorm, a little bit of lightning. Yeah, there was, wasn't there? It was cool. Yeah, we had a bit of a weather front coming. It's freezing again. Look at this. Why is it whenever we come to Orchid, it's freezing? <laughs> it's just this year. Every time I've been this year, it's just like horrible. Rubbish. Horrible. Yeah, not ideal. But <laughs> you had one stalking. Oh, yes. You're the new stalker extraordinaire. Well, you've either. always been a stalker, but <laughs> we're on the fishing front. <laughs> <laughs> on the fishing front, uh, it's new to you, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, do you know, it's really like it was really nice earlier because like yesterday when I caught that one, it was like all clouding up and I couldn't really see. Mm. And I've just seen the line go and like struck and I've got yeah, one on. Yeah, yeah. But this one, he just come in and started feeding. I just got my hook bait in place and he's just like ah. Oh. There was a bigger one there, so I've rebaited. There's always a bigger one there. Uh, he was a good one. <laughs> it was a big one there. But um, yeah, so I've rebaited and hopefully I'm going to have another, I might have a good crack at it tomorrow. Like, yeah. I might see how this goes in the morning. But yeah, I might I might have a little look in the corners and just mm. just see if I can do something. Like, cause every, you know, fishing orchid, it's like, look at us. We're in, yeah, you know, in, we're in prolific swims. Yeah, yeah. Like, not prolific swims, but well-known swims. Yeah, yeah. And you just get bogged down in that swim and don't end yeah, up walking about. Like, you know, yeah. so like if you if you should always, when you're going fishing, always have a walk around. Don't matter. And I see it. I see it on my own lake. People book a particular swim, and they like they would never walk round. No. And then, you know, say they just don't walk round. They turn up. They go in the peg that they booked. They fish. They leave. When really you should still have a walk round, and if you find yeah, the fish yeah. at the other end of the lake, then either ask to move or go and fish for them. Like mm. you know, it's that's carp fishing all over. And yeah, but yeah, it was nice. It was really exciting. It was nice just to like one minute you go up there, you check the spot, and all the baits there on the bottom, like not even touched. Next minute you walk up there, and it's like <laughs> just fizzing up, and you're yeah, like, Whoa, let's go, let's go and try yeah, and catch wicked. one. Yeah, love that. So yeah, it was quite exciting. Yeah, I went for a trot up the other end of the lake, so totally opposite end to your little finger arm sort of thing. There's obviously, what, what, what's that bait? Is the, it called the, the bait? The all the lake, yeah. yeah. So there's one swim in there called, but there's loads of males in there, like all just grouped I up you'd be together. I like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I did, I did go, hey, Bart, it's a bit of you, this. But yeah, loads of small males all gathered up into that bay and um, I just thought, mm, I don't, they didn't look like they were up for feeding or, and I 
dropped bait in the edge and they just swam straight over the top of it. So well, I thought I'd just let them be in it. there. I don't know, well, I'm hoping the females aren't too far away, mm, to be okay. honest. We could, hopefully they're in front of us, but they weren't in that bay with them other smaller ones that were in there. Like but that, that arm up there, literally I've seen like two or three fish, mm. but they just they just had a go. Yeah. So, um, but yesterday, like in the morning when we got here, they were boshing. Like, yeah, all right, mad, they stopped boshing whilst we set up and plumbed up. Mm. But then on the evening, they were like, again, I've Showing seen like mad, a dozen yeah. shows, like not far off us. I reckon this rain's knocked them. Yeah, like I today. I cold, cold rain's knocked them. Well, I was up at, what, four, five mm. o'clock we were up, first light, watching the water, and we've not single, not single seen fish one. bosh no. today. No. Oh, that's one of them, isn't it? But hopefully they come back sort of early morning, fingers crossed, because I obviously had that couple of bites this morning, so I'm sort of hoping the same thing's going to happen again for me. Hmm. Um, can but hope, I guess. There's nowhere else where I feel like a, there's a better move to be had. No, and it's filled up a bit now, isn't it? So we can't really yeah. move anyway, to be fair. Mm. Right? So it's a busy place. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's a lot, you know, there's a massive bit of fish in here, so it's yeah. going to be busy. Yeah, well, hopefully that might push them into the middle a little bit more as well, because it was busier when we got here, wasn't it? So hopefully it'll be the same format, fingers crossed. But anyway, right, camera's getting soaking. I'm getting soaking. I'm about ready for bed. <laughs> I've got to have a tidy up, do a bit of admin. I've got stuff bit everywhere. Of admin? Admin. Have you now? Yeah, a little tidy You've up. You've done admin in your life. You can get the cat on. Oh, can I now? Yeah, deal. What, you do admin, I do cattle? Yeah. How's that a deal? It's a good deal. Admin good means deal. you're going in, good, you're going in there and you're going on Instagram. Good deal for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, come on. I'll put the kettle on. Oh well, good morning. This is the way we like to start every morning, isn't it? Playing a carp. Got up at first light, and yeah, they were shuffling about out there. And I like to say shuffle because they always show a bit weird in orchid. They sort of come out, come up out the water and shuffle themselves along for a few seconds. It's always very odd sort of shows here. And yeah, we've seen a few right over the top of me. And this is the first bite on the right hander. Uh, you would have seen obviously yesterday, I put out all three rods on PB hook baits, a little bit of SLK in the boat, some maxi mix and the old, uh, ooh, hello. And the old uh, dashing of maggots over the top. And yeah, what looks like a very nice carp out there at the minute. Got the bark man on the netage. It's common, oh Colin. Quite why bark's that side of the rods, I'll never know, but still early, I guess. Come on, Colin. Go on. Ably jubbly. Yes, John. Yes, John. Okay. Well, no sooner have we Landed one on the right. The left one's gone now. The most productive rod of the trip. Although I leapfrogged this one over yesterday, so I actually put this slightly left. So basically the middle rod was 
the most productive rod because I, end, I ended up leapfrogging the right hand rod over to the left hand side just because you know the left the left was doing all the bites so I ended up doing that yesterday only by about a foot so you know not too much but it's all the difference I guess although now the middle rod's the most quietest rod and uh, that was the most productive one he's weeded himself out he took loads of line off the bite and then a backwind as well and now he's uh, found himself a weed bed out there something I'm not used to it orchid obviously because when me and Bart fish it normally it is freezing cold and there's no weed about but that's now starting to grow and there's plenty about at the minute so a few of them have weeded themselves up but yeah nice to come back and have that orchid carnage again absolutely love it I'd love it even more if this fish got out of the weed though I'm feeling kicking about out there still. There we go. He's out. Don't start going left. Go right. Please go right. Oh. oh, God, horrible. Oh, that looks a big carp, I think, that. He's in. <laughs> Double whammy, you. Mm. He's not far off 30 pounds, you. Happy days. Happy bloody days. We. Oui. Well, there we go, 30 pounds, 14 ounces. Finally got that 30 pounder. We've had a fair few 20s this trip, which has been nice, don't get me wrong, but it's home of the 30s. You can't go home without one, can you? Absolutely wicked. Well, this was part of a double take this morning. The other one weighing 27 pound 14. And um, yeah, absolutely mega. The third rod did bust off. Unfortunately, he fell off and I was sort of 
wondering whether that rig was sat funny or something because it's been the most prolific rod that one has but um but yeah all the while absolutely buzzing to be getting bites <laughs> wicked so we've got a few more hours of this trip left and fingers crossed bark can get amongst one of these 30 pounders from orchid it's been amazing wicked right let's get you home old ancient one Go on, son, you can go home if you want. Or Bart, Bart could take you if you like. Just catching me breath, Moz. Just catching me breath. There he goes. I finally got another bite off of the bait after Moz's fine performance of angling this morning. I couldn't see, they were bang on him as well. I just couldn't see me getting a bite as they were showing right on top of him. And I'm obviously fishing in over the way a bit, but it seems like a couple have drifted off and found my little spot, which is nice. Doesn't look a bad fish, to be honest. Well, none of them are bad fish in here, really. He's an old one. <laughs> yeah, a fair bit of weed at the moment as well, which is not causing problems, but you've got to watch out for it. Obviously, when we fish in the winter and stuff, there's not really much weed about. Quite, he fell in then. <laughs> <laughs> Top heavy at the minute. Top heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Terry. Well, there's one of those old, old orchid originals that I was after, 26 and a half pounds. And there's a little story behind this one because funnily enough, the last time I fished in this peg was six years ago. It was just after my son was born and I come up for an overnighter just to get out the house, get away from a screaming baby. And I chucked the rods out with my friend Scott and I caught this one at just under 20 pound on a solid bag. And I've caught it again considerably bigger from more or less the same area as well. How funny is that? The last fish I caught out of this swim was this one here. And a beautiful carp to go to boot. Lovely jubbly. Get a few snaps. Thank you, buddy. Well, just getting the rods ready to go out and I've not committed to anything this session, to be honest. I just thought I'd let the wind take me with whatever I feel like I want to do at the time. Um, and I'm going to have one on a PB wafter. Do not tell Mozza, but that's what he's been catching on. So I've changed to one of those because I was fishing with like little pop-ups, but I have uh, 
yeah. I don't know if there's something in it. Maybe they're just feeding just a little bit hard. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just confusing myself because, but for Mozza to get on a few, maybe there's something in it if he's catching. If he's catching more than me, there's something in it. So uh, yeah, I got one on a little, one on a little PB wafter, one just on a little, nice little pop-up rig, nice little spinner. It's like Mo Mozza's, Mozza's tipped his with a few maggots and I haven't bothered this time. I just thought, no, I'm just gonna fish them just like this. And it's, like it's working, I'm catching. But yeah, these rods are nearly ready to go. So simple, isn't it? Just putting these, flossing these little hook baits on. So quick. Yeah, boom, shakalaka. Ready to rock and roll. So I've got one wafter presentation, two little pop-up presentations. Let's get them out in the pond. Bailing out on me, Bart. Yes, Moz. I'm off. I've had enough of you. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's been wicked, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, nah, you can't not enjoy fishing here. I mean, like the fact that I've had to fish with you, I can, can stomach that. Yeah, consi I considering where considering. I am. Yeah. yeah, you know. But um, no, nah, it's been, it's been good. It's been nice to come back. It's very different fishing here with leaves on the trees. I know it's mad, isn't it's, it? Yeah. Although the weather hasn't been much better than the normal January trips, has it? No, nah, it's probably worse. I mean, mm. sat there like in yeah start of May and you have got steam coming off your breath. It's yeah, mm. hovering over the start. I've done four bottles of gas. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> been uh, it's not been not ideal. Not ideal, but we've had bites. We've yes. had plenty of bites. Been good. You've stalked some out the edge as well, which has been weird. Yeah, that's nice. That was really cool. Like yeah, you know, yes. just getting. It's just a bit different to how you'd normally fish here. Mm. Um, so just, like I say, just got to keep your eyes open, have a little wander about, see what the fish are up to. Um, Which no one does here, do they? No one tends to do that. Most people do yeah. what I've done. You know, they set up in a swim, just put three rods out, out and camp out and hope for the best. But you've sort of dotted about the place, put some bait in the edge and managed to catch a couple, which if you hadn't have done, I'd have absolutely carved you up a good one. Well, I was just... Which I've already done anyway, even with them fishing the edge, but... Uh, no, nah, you're dusting me by one. That's why you go... me by one now. One, never. Yeah, That wife. lake doesn't count, Bart. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm going to stay on for another night. I'm going to do one more night in the hope that that giant turns up. I lost one earlier on, which has hurt me, massively hurt me, because the hook holds have been amazing so far. I, th I think so... what, what hurts is you know, like if you're having like multiple bites out of here, mm. getting into sort of like 10, 12 bites. Yeah, and your last bite was a 30, and then you're just a just, bit like... We, this place just doesn't do, like you don't go that long without it doing a, like a big fish. No. It's just that there are an awful lot of big fish in here. Mm. So like the chances are that you, you, know, you have lost a big one. Yeah. Oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, well, anyway, well, we hope you've enjoyed the return back to Orchid as much as we've enjoyed fishing it, obviously. And uh, no doubt we'll end up back here this winter. Yeah, yeah, I'll be up for coming back. I mm. wouldn't, mind, uh, wouldn't mind having a go in the autumn, to be fair, maybe. Autumn series, I told you. We're Autumn not doing series. a winter series Autumn anymore. Series. Autumn series from now on in. <laughs> <laughs> right, Wicked, I'll let you hit the road whilst I carry on catching. Sounds. I see the bobbin go up. I'm not sure that's a brand. No. <laughs> well. It was well worth staying that extra night to catch this amazing 35 pound orchid 
belter. It's an absolute belter. The most angriest carp I think I've ever played in my life, to be honest. This thing tore me up and down the lake like you wouldn't believe and weeded me up for ages, but it was well worth the ag, let me tell you. What a wicked fish and what a wicked way to end what's been an amazing trip to the mighty Orchid Lake. Thank you very much, Beast. <laughs> wicked. <laughs>